Hey guys, this is Mark Piller. This is my second video in which I review a sample app we built for Android using Backendless Platform. In this video, we will be talking about registration API, user registration API. If you recall in the previous video, we have imported all the data, created data tables, and registered one user. For that, we use the order success module, which is the final module, and uh, uh, which we will be reviewing it later, but today I'd like you to focus on the registration module. So if you go back to your Android Studio and open registration, you will see the following structure. So first of all, uh, the backend settings that we configured yesterday, remember they are in the order success. So what you could do is copy these two lines from backend settings in order success and paste them in backend settings under registration. What that will do is it will point the registration module to your backend that you have configured. So let's take a look at the registration API and the registration module in general. First of all, if you go to the RES resources folder and open up layout and double click activity registration.xml. And as you can see, this is the layout and the design of the registration form. Uh, the layout is fairly simple. There is a grid layout that contains all the labels and text inputs for the registration form. The registration form is fairly simple. It's just name, email address, and the password, and the register button. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the concept of the user in this application is represented through these three properties, name, email address, and password. If we go back to Backendless Console, and click users you will see that the user properties contain just these three properties and it's it's not a coincidence because the registration of the user and the user entity description really should match between what you have on the back end and as shown in the console and what you have on the client side which is uh, the layout that we have in the application every single field here does have an ID so the name field is named as such name field then we have email field password uh, and the button is called register button so these IDs are important because they are going to be used in code in the actual application to see how it is all programmed let's go to registration activity class and uh, this method is called as soon as registration activity is started and let's take a look at a couple of things that are happening first of all there is backendless.init app API call. This is very important because every single application that uses backendless must call this line and uh, as it specifies the actual application ID and your secret key that we have imported as the very first step. To remind you, application ID and secret key are available in Backendless Console. If you click on Manage, the very first screen, which is App Settings, will contain application ID and then the keys for whatever programming environment you use. In this case it is Android, so it is going to use our Android secret key. So calling this me method is going to be extremely important and that should be the very first thing that you do in your application. How does the registration process work? Very simple. User fills out a form, clicks the button, and then we make a request to server to register that user. In order to link that button with a piece of code that runs whenever you click it, we create a button click listener. So in this method, create registration button click listener. Let's step in there. We basically put together the logic that uh, extracts all the data from individual fields. So here we get the field references, and then we can we obtain the values from those fields, and then there is a validation call and here is registration values valid and then uh, we create actual callback and this is the callback that will be invoked by Android well, backendless Android SDK whenever re registration with the backend is successful and then finally we're going to invoke register user so all of this will be happening whenever we click register button in the UI now the register user let's step in there this is where the actual backendless API is. As you can see, we create an instance of a special class called backendless user. So this class comes from the backendless library. We populate it with various properties, 
email, password, name, uh, exactly what we gather from user on the registration form. And then we make an API, backanalyst.userservice.register, and we pass in that user object in there. So literally, it takes just one line of code to register the user with a backend. And as a result of this line, your user entities will start showing up uh, on the backend. And the registration callback, it's an instance of the async callback uh, class. And this class contains two properties. One, uh, essentially two methods. One is the successful callback, and the other is the error callback. So if you remember, here we created that callback in the uh, click listener. Uh, and we're going to review this callback next. But before we do this, let's actually run this one more time just to see how it works. I'm going to select registration from the configuration settings. Here it is, registration, and click run. So now this form is up, and uh, in the module that I started, there is only one form, one uh, piece of logic for, for the registration screen. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, uh, a user just to see how it is working in this isolated uh, module. Here, let's call the user Bob the Builder. And clicking register will invoke that callback, and in the end, we're going to have the user registry. So here, the user is registered. There is an object ID, and if we go back to Backendless Console. We now see that Bob the Builder is a registered user of the application. All right, a few final things that I would like to review from the coding perspective. Let me go back to Android Studio. So first of all, we talked about the actual callback, loading callback. And let's take a look how the callbacks work in Backendless because we will be running into callbacks pretty much with every single API call that is done on the Android side for the reason that on the Android, you have to use asynchronous API. I'm going to step into create registration callback. Here we create an instance of loading callback, which is a custom class that we created specifically for this sample application. And the approach that is used here is actually recommended because I think it has a lot of uh, versatility. Uh, here in the loading callback, there is we're overriding handle a response method. And this method is going to be invoked every time when the customer is registered with that application. And uh, as you can see, the, the parameter that comes back is an instance of backendless user. And this is the user that actually represents a registered user with a backend. It already has object ID and all the proper elements of a registered object from the backend perspective. However, I'm going to step into loading callback so I can show you a few other details about this implementation. As you can see, loading callback implements async callback interface, which is the interface included into backendless SDK. There are two methods, two core methods that must be implemented. Handle fold. This method is invoked any time a server returns an error. And this, this, this could be uh, application level errors, let's say if a user already exists and uh, cannot be registered again, or if validation happens, or any other reason. And there is handle response. And then the handle response, the default implementation, doesn't do anything. But you just saw that we created the method that overrides handle response. So with this uh, approach, it's very convenient because it also includes the progress dialog that could be shown or dismissed. And then the logic for showing and hiding this progress dialog is, is, is quite convenient. But take a look at this method and uh, uh, see if you can start using it in your projects as well. This concludes this video. Uh, the registration screen is fairly basic. Uh, definitely try it out and in the next video we're going to start reviewing the, the process for login and entering the application and right after that we'll start getting into the logic of retrieving data and working with some more complex concepts. Thank you and as always happy coding.